Yes, and then uh, Dark King says, Literature Devil has a great video on Rings of Power. Galadriel is at how she's a Mary Sue. Uh, well argued and presented, and he nailed the issues with girl power writers. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, I, I don't, you know what? I didn't even watch the finale of Rings of Power. I watched videos about it, so I know everything that happens. And I just don't care. I, I don't care. I spent That's, 20 minutes on it, and I've spent yeah. more time talking about it. But, uh, Chris, what have you heard from your peers in the industry? Is everyone so impressed with the rings of power as the showrunner seems to suggest that we all should be? Uh, no, I heard from someone who has a connected Amazon that uh, if you really, if you want to know. Yes, um, please that effectively what they're they're going to be retooling and that the guys who are the showrunners are more than likely they're not going to be they're not going to be publicly fired but their role will be reduced uh potentially just remaining in the writers room but my understanding is they're looking for more experienced showrunners right well, here yeah they're well aware of the problems whether, you know, there's sort of like publicly what they say and what they're actually doing behind the scenes and what they're doing behind the scenes is they're, they're freaking out that this was more of a failure than could have been anticipated. I, I think the one, the quality of the show like that, the, the sort of like that, that is the number one thing. The fact that it's like, why don't, why am I still watching this? This is, this is sleep inducing. The second thing is the, the, the total rejection from fans, um, I can't believe that there, there, there has to be very few people that remain that still like it. And then thirdly, the direct competition from House of the Dragon, the strategically them announcing that they would have it come out at the same time and even like pre-seed and post-seed, so to speak. So it's House of the Dragon started earlier and House of the Dragon is ending you know, later. So I can't wait for the season finale of House of the Dragon. Won't we get the second season of House of the Dragon way before Lord of the Rings as well? Because they're like two, yes. two years yeah. out. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. about House of oh. Dragon, what I always like to bring up, and I'm so surprised that this hasn't caught more traction, it's Amazon's own fault that House of Dragon yes. exists. House of Dragon couldn't exist without Jennifer Zolke. Mm -hmm. Amazon's Jennifer Zolke is the direct cause for the existence of that competition. And yeah. for those that do not know the story, we have we alone have covered it several times. Amazon, they had a Conan series going from the exact showrunners of the House of Dragon. But Jennifer Salke scrapped Conan and she fired them. And that's when Amazon, sorry, when HBO swooped in and they hired Amazon's newly fired Conan showrunners to help them fix Game of Thrones which is what they did, and in record time, in no time flat, they transitioned from Conan to House of Dragon, and they kicked Amazon's ass. Yeah. So everybody send Jennifer Sulky some thank you cards to Amazon Studios <laughs> <laughs> for firing these guys so that you could have House of Dragon, and maybe someone at Amazon will will catch wind of those and realize, hey, we start, start taking smart people as opposed to whatever Jennifer Sulky was. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. so uh, nice going there. Nice going there, Jennifer. You really did Amazon a favor. But yeah, it sounds to me then, so they're retooling uh, the Rings of Power, which again, is exactly the same thing that happened with uh, Star Trek Discovery. Another glorious example of bad robot alumni uh, running... Uh, and also Picard as well. Ground. I think I'm some of it, much. some some of this has to do with the fact that the way these these things are laid, and this also affected She-Hulk, is a lot of these shows are now written in a vacuum. One of the beauties of network television is you could begin a show like a film, uh, a show like Lost, and you could kind of discover well who are the most popular characters, who has chemistry, what are the storylines we're going to going to explore. So they would begin a season without the rest of the season like existing. So they would, you know. Hey, here we've got like the four episodes in the bag. We're still writing. And so the audience reaction, that feedback loop actually helped make shows better. Now the feedback loop does not exist. Think about this. The feedback loop for streaming doesn't exist. When shows are completed, they complete an entire season before they've even gotten a reaction. Right. 
Krypton yep. can speak to this, uh, uh, you know. Yeah, you'd have your your first 13, and then the, you'd hope that you get picked up for your back nine to complete out your season, whether That's it be exactly. a sick count, succumb or hour-long part. And you'd plan about five shows ahead so that you could get enough feedback from the audience to better shape what you had planned for the for the next seven episodes. And then from there, yeah. you have the mid-season break where you start figuring out, okay, the back nine, this is what we the information we have. Let's use it to our advantage and really give uh, the people that are liking the show something to talk about. And that's where you used to see some shifts in shows, like as opposed to now where you're right, they shoot them all at once, Chris, like a movie. Right. And that's that's that losing that feedback loop the, from the audience. In, and not only have they lost the feedback loop with shows like She-Hulk and Rings of Power, they now vilify fans if they don't like the show. Well, how is that a winning strategy? Jennifer Salk even said it out loud. We censor opinions that we don't agree with. Yeah, that's that's, that's paraphrasing, but it was roughly those words. Like we we like we shut down the reviews that we don't agree with. Yeah, yeah, it, it's just it's um it's really disheartening to see in real time. Like this is what we're doing. Like like the audience used to be like the, the in a way sort of the ghost. You know, like they call it. Um, what is what is it they call it like with the Seattle Seahawks the 13th man it's like the sort of like it's like you're part of it right like like the audience is part of it you know it, for the Seattle Seahawks wherever you know they have this big stadium and they've actually measured like the decibel level of how loud the the, the uh, crowd can get it actually affects the game it, it affects it's hard to play in that stadium specifically because of the sound from the crowd and the sound uh, uh, or the fury or the feedback and or opinions of the audience matter because you want the most people possible to like your show, you know, especially if it's profit driven, which will lead to a show appealing to a more broad audience. That doesn't necessarily mean it's always a great show. Right. But I do think that that I do think that that feedback is helpful. And in particular, when it comes to things that are genre based, it, it, it matters a lot. It matters a lot. And, you know, that that luxury being taken away of an audience feedback loop is as hurt shows. It's resulted in something like She-Hulk where they weren't quite sure. And my understanding is that very first episode that explained her origin, that was not supposed to be the first episode. It was supposed to be more mid season. There was a major retool of She-Hulk. If you can imagine the show was worse um, and it was put on hold. And then Ms. Marvel um, debuted first instead of She-Hulk. She-Hulk was pushed back. So, but I, I, I just, and, and I'm sure a lot of that was just like fighting, like who knows, was Kevin Feige fighting with them? Whenever you hear these behind the scenes stories, I'm pretty sure all of them are approved. There's not one that's not sure. You can just say that we fought about this, whatever, you know, it's something for the press to write about. Um, but my God, I'm just, I'm, I'm like this strategy. How is it that shows that are popular, the audiences, they don't attack those audiences. You know, if it's I think it's because it got lucky. Because when you take a look at, say, the Netflix binge model, you have shows oh. like Stranger Things, uh, which, again, is shot like a film and was released and did well. Um, you had uh, or the first season of Origins of the New Black was a huge hit. Right. Um, you had on Amazon's thing, you had Jack Reacher was uh, quite popular and well, re well received. Um, uh, heck, if, if you want to go back to Marvel again, Daredevil, the first season of Daredevil was like the second most watched uh, season on its debut when it when it hit but the um, pattern i see script is that those shows that were good all the way through and was sustained it was started out good that's the big difference where they like some of these other shows there may be good things in them but they may have like a little tweaking midway through what could have helped to where it could have but again it's still yeah. a crap shoot whenever you're making yeah, a show. you don't know if it's going to be good absolutely or not. absolutely um, but that's what i'm saying like stranger things i think may have benefited from the fact that the, the creators had a vision. They were able to go in, do the same. Cobra Kai is a better example, maybe, where you know they, you know, the if you would have had feedback on something like that midway through, it may have destroyed the show as opposed to them being allowed to 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 finish their vision. But it, it is a double edged sword, and it, it's I, I see exactly where you're coming from with that, and I I agree with both sides of it. I think you should be able to have a little bit of feedback, but at the same time, I think some of the shows that are starting out good and have the most staying power are the ones where they have had the strongest voices like Cobra Kai and Stranger Things. Well, it comes like down that. to focus and professionalism. Yeah. The, the mere fact is that we're not getting 
a professional approach to the Disney Plus side of things on any of their shows. I would even argue there's a there's tug of war going on with just the Mandalorian because it's it's got good aspects to it, but it's got some really sketchy execution. That's a good um, example, yeah. But and I think the fact of the matter is that if if the the talent and the ones that have the good work ethic had more um, freedom with regards to how they want to operate and, and execute the show, you probably wouldn't have the blowbacks here. I don't think uh, people like Jessica Gao or Andrew Waldron or Adam Walbert, Waldron um, or Wahlberg was it, whoever it was from uh, Doctor Strange who did WandaVision and, and a few others. I don't think they have the discipline and the best support structure to get get them uh, to to allow them to be in charge of such large properties on Disney Plus or, or things of that nature. They're not. I think they're being ushered into a level of responsibility they just don't have the experience for. And I think as a result, that's why you're having them uh, put up these defenses. Well, it's not my fault. It's the fans. I'm not. I'm. I am a good enough writer. It's the fans that are are bad. It's the whole. You know, um, Sunset Boulevard. I'm not uh, small. It's the pictures that I'm. I'm still big. It's the pictures that got small or something of that nature. That's what they're trying to argue. Hmm. And it's self self defeating. It, it's exactly that. There's. It, it's. It's we're seeing a lack of accountability from the executives who should be hiring these people and saying, listen, I'm telling you, I want this type of story. You give me the best type of story you can. But then you also have the other set of executives that are like, I don't want to write, but I have all these ideas and I'll just hire the first set of writers that are cheap and are desperate for work and they'll do what I want. And if it doesn't work well, I can always just blame the, the audience because I know I'm a good writer. I'm the executive. Of course I'm good. You know, there's, there's those types of mentalities. Those have to be kind of weeded out uh, in the industry because that's not the type of ego that helps um build uh franchises the type of the ego that helps is yeah i'm the guy that hired this brilliant person and I, I made them what they are because i pushed them to do the best that they could i didn't care about what uh, the studio was saying i didn't care about uh trying to hit whatever is the current culture stuff i just wanted to make a lot of money and this is the way i did it like that's the type of ego you need in, in hollywood these days and i don't see see it happening at the, the larger studios right now yeah sad but true 